Hello guys, this is Annie from WCC here with Duncan Yuan of Toronto, who finished top 8 at the Bushiroad Standard World Finals. He decided to bring Genesis, which most people consider to be an off-meta pick. Why did you decide to bring this deck? Well, I picked Genesis based on like how I play test. It did well against all the other decks, like all, a lot of the decks like is like a triangle format, so like decks beat each other like Neo Nectar. Lost the Angel Feathers, Angel Fester lost the Murakumo, and it's like all these like things. And I was like, when I played test Genesis, it just saw uh, for me it was like the best overall against all those decks. And I was like, I'll probably just play this. All right, well, let's take a have, let's take a look at your deck. So what do we have here? Okay, so you have your starter. Some people will like once you play like a trigger. I'm like that's that's neg. You either just draw a card, mm -hmm. hit more triggers and stuff like that. So I'll move into Great Feast first, uh, very straightforward. You have uh, four of your VR, Oracle, Queen, Kimiko. Uh, perfect, most people will know. It's Soul Blast 5. Uh, choose a draw trigger or the critical trigger, and you can apply those effects three times. Uh, she's the main base of the deck, is why it's so good. Like, uh, I tend to always go draw first time. Uh, drawing free cards and giving 10k of board is uh, pretty busted effect and uh, the critical is a good finisher especially if that forward damage even if it doesn't finish it adds a lot of pressure to your board that was that. next we'll go with uh, my secondary grade free uh, so I, I don't actually know her name it's like goddess of the Milky Way Polone I play four of her uh, her effect is uh, on place on Vanguard or Rearguard you check your top three cards of your deck, you can add one to your soul and put uh, two on top. Uh, the reason I really like her is that she uh, allows you to try to find triggers to add if you don't have any triggers available, as well as uh, top checking your deck. Uh, so like, say like you get like two triggers, right? You could stack your deck, make sure uh, you hit the two triggers and they two to pass you, you'll know that you can break through. So uh, that's it for my great freeze. One thing is like, why don't you play uh, the triple rare? Uh, Iwakana Hime. Just because uh, through testing, I just found uh, I didn't really need the soul. Uh, I didn't have the soul, the soul blast to free, as well as her effect being uh, very, very meh. Uh, the double power is good sometimes, but uh, sometimes it just doesn't matter in the long run. So I, I decided to cut her. Uh, so next, we'll start with our grade twos. First, we'll start with uh, this guy. I don't know. This guy's name is so long. Strong Bow of the Starry Knight. Uxies. So uh, his effect is uh, on attack on rear guard. Uh, after it attacks a vanguard, you can put him to soul. You draw a card and soul charge one. So uh, he's good for uh, fueling your soul that you need for Genesis, as well as uh, putting an on hit pressure. So like if you p open this guy and you have like two more, it's just a lot of on hit pressure. Kind of makes it that have to, have to hit a trigger and stuff like that. And it's, uh, helps in uh, pressuring your opponent. Next we have uh, Battle Maiden Shitaru I don't know her name. Uh, her skill is Counter Blast 1. The next time you would Soul Blast, you can reduce it by 2 and you give a unit. Other unit plus 3000. So uh, she's really important for the deck. Soul Blasting 5 is a very hefty cost considering uh, how much you Soul Charge is in a lot. So uh, Counter Blast to reduce is very important. Uh, the free K is also like you can use them to make magic numbers. Say like, you have a grade free, as well as like a grade one. If you use it, now I'll hit like 24, which hits all the Vanguard numbers really well, opposed to uh, it being 21. So yeah, she's basically like a staple in like the deck. We'll move on. So uh, here's a uh, play four Bao Maiden Sao Hime. Her effect is Counter Blast one, Soul Blast two. You draw two cards. You put a card from your hand into Soul. Uh, she's really good, uh, just because plusing cards is really strong. It also allows you to uh, filter your hand, put like draw triggers and stuff like that you need in the Soul, so you can use your Great Freeze effect. Yeah. She's also. Uh, Good if you need to just draw cards to defend or just need to draw some pieces, make sure you draw your great free and stuff like that.
That's it. So I'll start with uh, grade ones. So first we'll start with this one, Battle Maiden, Mikurihime. Uh, her skill is uh, on place. Uh, next time you Soul Blast, you can reduce it by free. It's just like the grade two, it just helps uh, make sure that you don't have to Soul Blast or anything uh, for your Vanguard skill to reduce its cost because you don't have that, you won't have that much soul. Uh, as you can tell, if you have her as well as the grade two, like one counter blast, you basically make your uh, Vanguard skill free, and all you have to do is place the trigger back underneath your deck, and then you can use the effects. So, pretty sure she's a staple. Next, we have uh, four Witcher Cats Cumin. Uh, this is also a really important card in the deck. Uh, her skill is counter blast one, rest it herself, and uh, she could do one of two effects. One of either putting a trigger from your drop zone into uh, the soul or uh, returning a card on your field back to your hand. So uh, with her, most of the time you'll either you'll put it you'll probably put it like a draw trigger or a crit depending on the situation. But sometimes, like if if you can't use the skill or if you go for other win con, I'll explain a little bit later. You can uh, add a card back to hand. So like you could act if you need to soul blast reduction, you could add like. This girl, if, if it's on the field, back to your hand, so you can use its effect again. Uh, the, the effect is when it comes into play, you get to do it, right? Perfect. Which one? Yeah, when it comes into play, when you're right, yeah. yeah. Next, uh, we'll go with a uh, very important card. As it's one of your win cons, which are Frog's uh, Melissa. So her skill is on place, uh, Soul Blast free, and your opponent takes the top cards of his deck equal to amount of rear guards and uh, he places those cards onto those rear guard spots so the reason why uh, this is one of your win cons is because uh, as you tell with like Witcher Cat's Cumin and stuff like that you can bounce in this card back to your hand and if you have enough soul reduction or soul you could uh, potentially mail your opponent say they have like 5 rear guards 20 cards if you have enough uh, resources you can use this four times and then they'll deck out and they just lose the game. Uh, another good uh, thing about this card is that it could disrupt the board. Say like you're against a Murakuro player, they have like three Musashis on your board, you can just play this and then it'll just get rid of all those Musashis and uh, call cards. Another thing I like to do with this card is if I can tell like they have, they have like a lot of triggers in their deck or something like that, I might just play him, try to mill out a couple of triggers so he doesn't hit them and stuff like that. Yeah, overall, pretty important card. Uh, next is uh, one, uh, this guy, Swift Runner of uh, Clear Skies, Achilles. Um, generally, like, the only reason I play him at one is just because like, he's not that important. Uh, he's kind of just there to fill space. It was either him or the Great Free, but I figured the, the shield's a little bit better. He's like generally what you want to ride, just because like, he's not going to do much. Uh, there are times where, like, this one time may, might be useful. His skill is like, sorry, his skill is to uh, put into soul and you give free units plus free K. Uh, generally, like, sometimes if you're like missing a soul or something, you could just shove him in there. Uh, yeah, well, that's he's just the one of. So that let's just go to the trigger lineup. You play uh, four heals, obviously, self-explanatory. Uh, some decks you need to. Trying to manipulate to get heal triggers and stuff like that. Next, we have uh, four perfect draws. This is also very self explanatory. Like that. So, uh, this deck, I play, uh, I only play like two regular draws. Uh, I tested playing like one more, so like seven draws in total, but I found that uh, you didn't have enough offensive pressure sometimes. So, I only opted for two. And then uh, here we have uh, six crits. Let's play three of each just because maybe your opponent will think you have more and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, the reason why I play crits because like, uh, I need a little bit more offensive than playing more draws. That's it. Alright, thank you, Duncan. So. Lastly, now that the world is over, what do you think so far of your personal performance and uh, the current meta? Uh, I feel like 
there are a couple of games where I could have done better. Uh, I feel like the deck performed really well. Just like small like stuff. Overall, for Worlds meta, I would say Genesis still be my pick. Murakumo is really strong. Great Nature is also really strong. I'd, I feel like uh, some of the other decks that are predominant in uh, extra boosters, so like Neo Nectars and Angel Fighters, they kind of fell off a bit with the new set, so yeah. Cool. Lastly, any shout outs? Uh, shout outs to my boys back home in Toronto, all helped me practice this deck, told me his deck was shit, so I had to beat him, and then they're like, yeah, it's a great deck and stuff like that, so <laughs> yeah, but thanks for them for helping me practice. Stuff like that. Sometimes we'd be too lazy and it'd be like, come on, get on. And thing. So, yeah. Alright. Well, once again, congratulations on your top 8 finish and hopefully we'll see you at Worlds next year. Thanks.